one of the three pillars of Campbell Clinic is outstanding patient care, teaching, and research. And these things really go hand in hand because you can give good clinical care, but you also need to be understanding how you can teach this to, to our surgeons and to our residents and, and medical students. And so that's what we do here. We train surgeons and residents to go out in their communities. Some have gone out into our community and practiced orthopedics. One of those drivers is research because research helps you in many ways. One, I think it asks, teaches us to dig deeper. So to ask questions like, can we do better? How are we doing? Right? So just because we did a surgery this way today doesn't mean we can't do it better tomorrow. And so the, the research process of going through our results and critically analyzing them really drives us to be better. In the pediatric orthopedic department, we have 30 ongoing studies at any time. We have uh, full-time support, including a research coordinator, a librarian, a video editor. And so we're constantly uh, working on our research projects. We're involved in eight to 10 multi-center studies with other institutions around the country, which not only allows us to collaborate with institutions like Boston Children's or Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, but it allows us to exchange ideas and to bring the best practical ideas to patient care. Within that, we also teach. And so we train 40 residents a year that then go out in their communities and become orthopedic surgeons and many more medical students. So we involve them in the research process as well uh, so that they can understand how research works and where the latest developments in medicine are coming from. So also we write Campbell's Operative Orthopedics, which is the largest selling textbook in the world on orthopedics, of which the pediatric orthopedics section is, is regarded as a worldwide resource. Uh, we also, we publish, so I've published over 120 peer review articles in medical journals over my career, which has really helped expand the, the medical knowledge, especially in the areas of scoliosis and spine surgery, and my colleagues have done the same. This also puts us on national and international stages when we present our research, and uh, we're at every major orthopedic meeting exchanging ideas and bringing the best of what's out there back to Campbell Clinic. So, I think research in it of itself is valuable, but I think what research drives in terms of teaching and patient care also makes us better and differentiates us from a lot of others. One of our favorite topics in pediatric research is called the myth buster. This is where we take something that's been passed along generation to generation, sometimes in a textbook, which really doesn't have a lot of scientific foundation. One of the more recent examples, uh, we did a research project looking at child abuse and non-accidental trauma and found out that some of the classic x-ray findings that were always described in non-accidental trauma weren't actually true. And so what this has done, I think, is it dispelled some of the myths that were being propagated in meetings and textbooks. It gives us much better information when we're trying to make such a critical decision about whether this patient may have been injured in terms of child abuse or not. One of the things we're constantly trying to do is improve, and this goes under what's known as quality safety value. And so one of the quality safety value projects we have going on right now is looking at sound levels in the operating room. You can imagine in an operating room, things get to get pretty loud. If you have a people in there and you have equipment and you have conversation, and as a pediatric spine surgeon, one of my procedures may take five or six hours. And so during that procedure, there's different times when noise levels are louder and noise levels are quieter. We're currently doing a research project with the audiologist at the University of Memphis looking at sound levels in the operating room. What we're looking at is whether or not these sound levels actually may interfere with team communication or maybe even critical thinking during that important time. Our goal is to develop some very simple solutions that have been tried in other systems to decrease OR sound levels so that the, the team can focus and have the highest level concentration during that time during the surgery.